Hello everyone, my name is Ishan, and welcome to this quick little overview of how to use Dashboard. So uh, Dashboard is the open source platform created by the HackUMass and HackHer413 teams, um, and it's a system for managing your event applications, hardware checkouts, schedule, mentorship requests, and so much more. Um, and so today, we're going to give you guys a quick overview of how to use Dashboard, um, kind of what your participants are going to see, um, what you as an organizer are going to see as you are trying to you know, navigate the platform, and also what your mentors are going to see and how they can help to assist your hackers uh, as best they can. So in order to kind of demonstrate, uh, I've set up a staging instance of Dashboard here, and we're going to go to dashboardstaging.hackumass.com. Um, and as you can see, I'm on this login page for the lovely Red Panda Hacks. And right now, I'm going to try and sign up um, as a participant. So I'm just going to click the Sign Up button, and I'm going to say that my name is Participant Panda. Oh, it's already auto-completed. Love it. And I'm going to sign up with the email address panda at hackumass.com. My password, I'm going to type in something super secret here. And I'm going to create a new account. So, uh, as you can see here, I've created a new account for Red Panda Hacks. Um, and up here, you can see that I'm Participant Panda, and I can kind of click this button, and this is how I might sign out. Um, and of course, that email address that I typed in there, um, you know, that's going to receive an email saying, you know, thank you so much for signing up for Red Panda Hacks. Uh, and it's going to have a little button and, uh, and a little reminder there to start your application if you haven't started it already. Um, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go right ahead and click click apply now to get started with my application. Um, so I'm going to type in my full name here, participant panda, uh, and then I'm going to type in my phone number, uh, and I'm going to type in my age, so I'm going to be 21, and I'm a man, and I go by he, him. My education level is I'm a senior in college, my university. Oh, there we go, University of Massachusetts Amherst, and my major is computer science. There it is. Um, all right, now here it's gonna ask me if I have any food allergies and uh, you know or dietary restrictions, and uh, if I hit no, you can see it's just kind of standard. But if you press yes. Um, little box appears where you can list your dietary restrictions and of course I'm a panda so I'm gonna type I only eat bamboo because I mean that's the truth right um, I'm gonna type in my t-shirt size I think it needs to be extra small red pandas are, are kind of really small animals uh, and then I'm gonna choose a resume file so I've got a, a panda resume here ready to go already as a PDF and I'm just gonna uh, you know upload that here I'm going to say my LinkedIn URL, GitHub URL, we're going to leave all this stuff blank. Um, have you ever been to a hackathon before? I'm going to write that I have not been to a hackathon before. Uh, but if you were to you know, press yes, it might ask you how many you've attended. Maybe you could type something like three. Um, and then it's going to ask you if you've previously been to Red Panda Hacks. Of course, again, if you press no, kind of nothing shows up. But if you press yes, uh, since you've attended Red Panda Hacks before, is there anything you were different you'd like to see? I'd like more the bamboo I'd like more variety in the bamboo selection all right um, so now we're gonna you know type in our programming skills here so I'm gonna say that I'm good with Ruby and Python and uh, maybe I'm also really interested in uh, you know 3d printing as my hardware skill that's something I know how to do um, and then, of course, you can type in some other tech, non-tech related skills or tech related skills, uh, and share them here. I'm great at eating bamboo. Uh, that's totally not tech related, but we're gonna roll with it anyway. Um, what would you like to get out of Red Panda Hacks? You know, some other questions here, whatever. Uh, would you be interested in a beginner track? Uh, yeah. No. I don't know, it doesn't matter. Um, and of course, we're gonna select the Gorilla T-shirt marketing as how we heard about Red Pen Hacks because that's the uh, the best way to hear about it. Um, what hardware do you wanna see? We're gonna leave that blank. Application was long, spirit animal, of course, Red Panda. Um, and then we're gonna agree to the terms and conditions here and we're gonna submit our application. 
Um, so that was really awesome. As you can see, your participants are able to kind of go through there, select whatever questions they, they want to uh, answer, leave some of them blank, um, kind of work through this dynamic application, and uh, they're able to submit. And once they submit their application, you know, your participants are going to see a screen that looks something like this. Um, and of course, they can always edit it by going over to my application, and they can kind of view this page here. You can see my resume, Participant Panda. It's really beautiful, I know. Um, definitely not a Word template or anything. Uh, and then, you know, we've got the, you know, the PDF viewer right in there. And uh, here's the answers to all the questions that I put in. And of course, here's the button to edit. Um, I'm not going to go through and edit anything, so I'm just going to go back home. Um, but yeah, so now that I've kind of signed up for Red Panda Hacks, I'm going to show you guys what to do if you're uh, a hackathon organizer. And, you know, maybe me as the organizer, I really want to accept Participant Panda. They look like an excellent participant for my hackathon. So I'm going to go over here to another uh, web browser where I'm going to log into a different HackUMass uh, kind of account here. And here I'm going to log into admin at HackUMass com with my super secret password um, and we're not going to save that and now you can see kind of I'm logged in as Asa admin and uh, that's our administrator for Red Panda Hacks she's one of the organizers and you can kind of see the uh, the overall view that an administrator might see so you as a hackathon organizer this is the kind of main page that you're going to see and that's you know you can see it's very different from uh, you know what the participants see on their end when uh, they submit their application it's kind of just hey we you've applied like congratulations uh, but you know if you're a an organizer, you're going to be able to see how many applications were submitted, how many people have RSVP'd, how many hardware checkouts, a, a lot of metrics over here, and uh, you should also be able to see, you know, kind of like a lot of other interesting things uh, that are coming up. We're going to get all into all that in a second. So for right now, let's go over to the Applications tab, and let's look through the applications we have here. We've got one from Participant Panda, so I'm going to click on Participant Panda's application. And uh, as you can see, it's kind of a similar view to what the participant could see, uh, except I have these magical buttons down here so I can accept, deny, or waitlist, uh, or even flag this Pandas application as maybe something that might have some dubious elements and I want to come back and look at it later. I can also view their resume. You can download it or print it right from here. Um, and that's all really, really handy and really fancy. Uh, and also, uh, you know, admins, you can, do, you can do anything. So you can go in here and edit someone's application. This is useful. If they made a typo in their email address or something, or you know they they kind of picked the wrong phone number or anything like that, it's it's very useful. But uh, use this power wisely with uh, you know as as uh, as we all know with great power comes great responsibility. And so kind of I'm going to go back to the applications page here, and right before I accept Participant Panda, I'm going to show you guys how you can kind of filter and search for some of the things. So these tabs up here, these these are all links, and if you click undecided, for example, it'll show you only the undecided applicants click accepted only the accepted ones flagged will show you all the ones that are flagged now that we have flagged participant panda we might want to unflag them because their resume actually is real and it contains their name so so we're gonna accept participant panda to our event and you can see their application status has gone to accepted uh, we can kind of view the other applications here but yeah there's also a search by the way that, that works lovely. Um, so these are all kind of features that you can you can use when you're trying to sort through your applications and figure out who to accept, who to deny, all that kind of stuff. But enough about the applications. Now we've accepted Participant Panda. So let's go over to the Participant view and uh, see what they see. So I'm just going to click up here and refresh the page. And as you can see, I've now been accepted to participate in Red Panda Hacks. So you know now you get a little congratulations. You've been accepted uh, kind of view. Uh, and there's going to be some traveling uh, information here and then there's also going to be some other information about where to go kind of how to see the venue on Google Maps you can see this you click this link it'll give you all kinds of lovely information about your campus and and maybe what building your event is in and that's really useful to your participants so uh, you can put information about parking in here uh, you know this copy it can all be updated in our configuration repo so as an organizer this is gonna be really easy for you to get out vital information to your hackers um, and so as you can see we also have an RSVP feature um, 
And so, you know, the, it's really simple, just RSVP, yes or no. Uh, and, you know, it, the, the way this kind of works is, you know, once the participant clicks RSVP, uh, you'll see what happens, but it, you know, I don't want to ruin the surprise. They're going to get a different view, of course. Um, but if they click, sorry, I can't participate, um, what actually ends up happening is that their application gets denied. And that's really useful for us because, uh, you know, on the back end, it just kind of allows you to not kind of have people say they can't come and then and then change their minds later and say they actually can it's really really confusing when that happens so so that's why you know we tell people please only rsvp if you're 100 percent sure um so we're going to click the rsvp button here for participant panda and as you can see once you've rsvp'd you get another awesome menu um so dashboard has a slack integration so the first thing that comes up front and center congrats you know, you've joined our Slack. Uh, now, this person actually has not joined our Slack. This is actually fudged because we're in a staging instance. But if you had a Slack, um, you know, a Slack that you've put in the, the proper keys for in your deployment, then what's going to happen is the Slack API is going to check the participant panda with their email address, which is participantpanda at hackymass.com. They're going to check that that user account exists in the Slack. And uh, if it does, you're going to kind of get this message about the about the Slack channel. And uh, again, like I said, this message is kind of faked right now because we don't have a fake red pen to hack Slack to check against. Um, but, you know, trust me, all, all these API calls, they kind of do work. Um, and then another thing, of course, you know, there's a QR code. So every participant, they get the QR code. It's on the website. It's also going to appear in their email. Okay, so you can just like look into your, your email and you'll get an email with the QR code on it. Um, again, you have this I cannot attend button, does the same exact thing on RSVPs, denies their application, lets you know that people are not going to be showing up. Uh, and then, you know, we've got some bus transportation details, we've set up Slack channels for these details, uh, and then, you know, we've got our same getting to the event kind of stuff. And this is the view overall. So what we're going to do now that we've accepted Participant Panda is we're going to go back over to our admin view. Uh, whoops, whoops. Uh, that's over here and uh, you know we're gonna say that you know it's the day of your event the participant has showed up and you want to check them in and so of course you know in order to do that you can see there's no tab up here for check-in and that's really really important because check-in is turned off right now so no one can be checked in so what you need to do is head over to the admin panel here and we're going to go into the feature flags tab. Now feature flags is how you turn on and off these little features, you know, the little individual components of dashboard for your organizers and your participants. So as you can see, you know, if I was to go back over to participant view, the only feature that's enabled is my application. That's all I can see as a participant. The only kind of thing that I can do is, is my application. Um, because the only feature here that's enabled is applications. Um, now, check-in obviously is not something that ever gets enabled for um, your participants. It only gets enabled for your administrators and your organizers, um, but we're going to get into that later. So right now, let's enable check-in, uh, and as you can see, the check-in tab appears at the top, nice and handy, ready to go here, and we're going to come right back over to the dashboard for the participant, and you can see that nothing has changed, right? So check-in only gets enabled for your organizers, and I'm going to try and check in here, participant panda, so we're going to get, uh, mm -hmm. you know, panda at hackumass.com, that's the email address I use, and I'm going to check participant panda in and so it says participant panda has been checked in successfully you can also you know the, the i did that via email the email address and you know here's the email address it's right here on the on the page panda hackingmass.com but alternatively you know you can also use the qr code and the way that would work is you just get a really cheap qr code scanner from amazon and you would just plug it into the usb port of your computer and uh kind of like put the you know put the cursor on this thing and scan the qr code boom it's going to automatically populate that field and check that person in and that's really useful when you want to go quickly with your um, check-ins like you want to make sure that check-in is as quick as possible and that's why we have the qr codes it lets us get through you know like hundreds of people in in a matter of like you know just a couple of hours so that's really useful it really makes check-in a lot faster and now that we're you know we're checked in i'm going to refresh this page and show you guys kind of where we're at so now you'll notice the view hasn't changed very much um but the project section kind of has opened up because the per, the you know the event has started and uh and you know project submissions are currently over but that's that's a that's a little bit of an oversight because we haven't enabled it in the feature flag but um whoops 
the you know the project tab appears the application is still there uh, it's gonna tell you hey you can check out hardware it's the same QR code as before uh, you use it to check into the event you can also use it to check out hardware um, and now that you've checked into the event it's gonna tell you hey you know mentorship channel that may be a place you want to head out um, and, and you know there's some other slack channels here team forming mentorship uh, there's a schedule you can see that you know it'll it'll kind of show you all of the things here now I've messed up because as you might imagine I've turned all the feature flags off we can we can kind of see that here that all these feature flags are off and what you would do is when you turn on check-in you're gonna also want to kind of turn everything else on because when you're turning on check-in that means your your event has started so since our event has started let's turn on the ability for participants to check out hardware uh, let's show them the prizes let's show them the schedule let's allow them to create mentorship requests and let's allow them to start submitting projects so I'm gonna turn everything on okay and now my participant is checked in they're at the event they're at the venue they're working on their hack and they're ready to go and we've got everything turned on so let's go back to the participant view and uh, boom everything is right here so we've got the schedule we've got their application that they can always still go back and view um, They've got the schedule. Here's the you know kind of three events on the schedule that are already there. It's a live schedule. It gets automatically updated and refreshed. It also shows up on their main page under upcoming events. You can click view all. It'll take you right back to that page. Um, and it's re it's really nice. You know once they've checked in, they can kind of go there. And as an administrator, of course, you have the option to edit the schedule. You get the idea. You can add things to the schedule. You can also click on any of these events and edit them. Uh, you know, I can just kind of go in here and say, oh, team forming is actually going to be team breaking. Uh, that's totally not what it's called, but whatever. It's updated. And if I go back to my participant view, uh, you can see the schedule has been updated accordingly with the with the proper name team breaking for our event. So this is really great. You know, there's a lot of good stuff in here. Um, and that's all very lovely. So now that we've kind of talked about the schedule, um, Let's uh, let's kind of take a look at maybe the prizes. So you can click on this tab here, and you can see all of the prizes that that are up for grabs at our event. And it's a very similar situation. You know, if you go to the prizes tab as an administrator, you can kind of click on any of these and edit them. It looks just like the schedule. Um, and uh, you know, you can also create a new prize whatever it might be. So as an administrator, you know, you're going to have the options to configure all of these things ahead of time. Like you can go in here two weeks before your event, list all your prizes, and then go to the feature flags and turn prizes off so no one can see it, right? And then you can have your applications open and no one will know that your prizes are already ready to go. You just turn on the feature flag once the event starts and boom, all of a sudden your participants are able to view the prizes that are pre-populated in the field. Um, so that's really useful. And uh, we use that every year at AccuMass. So, uh, yeah, of course, you know, we've got the prizes. And then we're going to talk a little bit about hardware. Let's talk about hardware. So let's say you got hardware. Uh, as you can see, uh, the hardware inventory allows for the participants to search all by themselves, to search for the hardware. You can see we have no hardware populated in here. So I'm going to show you how easy it is to add. We're going to go over to the admin channel, um, the admin kind of interface. And we're going to create a new hardware item. We're going to call it an Arduino, Arduino board. I'm going to say we've got 15 of them. Uh, Arduino.cc, and it is a, you know, we're going to call it a, I don't know, what is an Arduino? Microprocessor, microcontroller, something like that. I'm not a hardware guy. All right, forgive me. And boom, we've created an Arduino board. You can see it's got a UPC number, which is really awesome um, because that allows you to have physical barcodes. Like we print out physical barcode stickers and barcode every piece of hardware. And again, this is really, really useful because it allows you to speed up the process of checking out hardware to someone. Um, so we're going to make another thing. In this one, I'm going to make a robotics kit uh, we're gonna you know say that we've got like three of them and the link like robots.com and uh, you know I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this is a kit and we're gonna create this hardware item as well now we've got two hardware items uh, so let's go back over to the participant view and you can see that now we've got these two hardware items and the participants are able to totally view and search this on their own. It lets them kind of plan out their hacks ahead of time, see what you guys have. There's not going to be any more questions. I'm sure 
every organizer here has experienced, uh, you know, you getting an email from a participant, like asking you a question like, hey, do you guys have XYZ hardware item? Like, I know we get that kind of email all the time, like in the weeks before the event. So this allows you to kind of prevent that from ever happening. You can just turn on the hardware feature. Like at Hack you Mass, we usually turn it on about a week before the event. And we send out a little email telling everyone that our hardware is live and that they can view the hardware that we're gonna have. Um, and that allows them to kind of go through, kind of think about ideas for their hack, see what we have, see what we don't have, uh, maybe even send us an email requesting something that they know we don't have. It's really useful. And of course, there's a search. It works as you would expect. I'm going to type in robot. I got the robotics kit. Uh, you know, it's very, it's very straightforward. So that's that. Um, you know, so there we go. We've got hardware search and, uh, you know, but right now, remember we're back in the, in the mentality of our participant is there. They're at the event. They want to check out one of these pieces of hardware. So let's make that happen for them. All right. So I'm going to go back over to the administrator view. And remember, uh, if you're ever confused by me switching a whole bunch at the top here, my administrator is called Asa admin. All right. And she's the one who's got all the awesome permissions to do everything here. So we're going to, uh, you know, check out a hardware item. So we're going to just kind of, all you need to do to check one out is you need to just find the hardware item. You need to click on it. Okay. And of course, you know, finding it and clicking on it is a total pain in the ass. So we've done, done a similar thing here. The search works exactly as you would expect with the UPC numbers. And the, the great thing here is, you know, when you search a UPC number, it takes you directly to that hardware item. And uh, this is really useful because again, these UPC numbers are embedded in the barcodes that we have stuck to all the hardware. And so again, we've got the barcode scanners. They're plugged into the USB port on a laptop. Uh, and all you need to do then is, uh, uh, you know, just scan the barcode and w with your cursor in this kind of box right here, you scan the barcode and it takes you directly to this page. All right. And once you've got that, you know, we've got our hardware information here, blah, blah, blah. And it's really simple. We want to check out the Arduino board to participant Panda. So simple. We go right here, click our cursor in this box and you just boom, scan the QR code. But if they don't have the QR code, because we don't have one right now, we're going to do pandahackumass.com, autocomplete, checkout item, all done. Now we know the participant panda has got one of the Arduino boards. We used to have 15. Now we've got 14 and it's been checked out to participant panda and they can kind of view it here that we only got 14 left and we can view all the checked out items. This is the Arduino board checked out by participant panda. We can click on this button to message them on Slack if they haven't returned their hardware yet. And we want them to do that so we can just DM them on Slack, be like, hey, you know, participant panda, we'd really, you know, we're shutting down hardware. We'd really like you to return your hardware items to us. Um, and yeah, and this is kind of how it goes. So here's their Arduino board again. This is the, the menu. You can see who's checked it out here. It's got the count. It's all updated. And if I go to my participant panda view, you know, you can see that now I can see the Arduino board. There's 14 of them. So this updates for everyone. It allows all the participants to know when you run out of a hardware item, they can just search for it. It allows your hardware team, your hardware table to not waste a lot of time. Okay. So that's really useful. Um, you know, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna just go here really quick and return this item. So, so now the hardware item has been returned. Participant Panda doesn't have it anymore. They gave it back. Um, and that's kind of how hardware works. Um, and so we're going to talk about one more thing. I know this video is getting really long and hopefully I'm going to be able to cut some of it out in post, but um, basically we're going to talk about mentorship requests because those are also really awesome. So we're going to go over to our participant page and we're going to click on the mentorship tab and we're going to submit a brand new mentorship request. So participant panda here, I want some help with Arduino, got an Arduino board, cannot do boo shoot. All right, so we've got an Arduino. We're gonna select the Arduino technology tab here. This is really useful because it allows us to categorize all of the mentorship requests into different languages or technologies. And that helps the mentors um, search for helping participants with the stuff they're familiar with. You know, that way you don't have mentors who don't know anything about Ruby on Rails trying to help someone with a Ruby on Rails project. Um, so we've, you know, we can't connect our Arduino board to the bamboo shoot. This is a drastically urgent problem. We absolutely cannot work on anything else until we've got our bamboo shoot connected to the Arduino board. And uh, help, help, 
Okay, and uh, you can also submit a screenshot here, similar thing, just attach a file. Um, you know, I'm gonna attach this like weird uh, login page that I made for some other random web application, and I'm gonna tell Jesus to take the wheel. Okay, so now I've submitted a mentorship request, and uh, I can see all of my mentorship requests right down here. Uh, and you know what? I can even submit another one if I'm feeling a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, overwhelmed, and I really need more help. So I'm gonna say. I don't know C++. Um, so there we go. I'm going to say this is only mildly urgent. Help. And I'm not going to attach a screenshot this time. I'm just going to leave it blank. Uh, and you can see all of my you know, mentorship requests show up here. Um, so yeah, really awesome. We've got, we've got our mentorship requests here. You can edit the request. You can kind of dismiss it if you figured it all out. And uh, yeah, this is the view for the participants. So let's go over, and we're not even going to go to the admin view. The admins actually, you know, as you can see, they get a, a little indication here of the latest mentorship request, but we're not even going to go to the admin view because the admins can do everything. We're going to go over to this tab here, and we're going to go to... We're going we're gonna to log into a mentorship account. We're going to get to see what the mentors see. So... This is uh, really exciting. We've got Master Shifu here, our Red Panda mentor, who's gonna help save the day on this Arduino board bamboo shoot problem. Um, so as you can see, when the mentors sign in, you know they're able to to get you know a same same thing, a little Slack thing, making sure they join Slack and and giving them a link to the mentorship channel. Um, they've also got access to the schedule. Um, you know, you want your mentors to know what's going on and when, um, and then of course they can they can view the hardware just as much as anyone else can. Uh, you know, that might be useful for them to maybe give suggestions to a team about what hardware item a team might want to use. They can they can search for it here. They can also look at all the prizes. I don't know if they would care, but but they definitely can. And they're also able to see all of the projects, um, which we're going to get to later. Um, so now we're in the mentorship dashboard, and you can see that as a mentor, the mentorship das dashboard is kind of where you want to live. The mentorship dashboard is how your mentors are going to help resolve these tickets from your participants. So it's really, really simple. There's a search bar. Works just as you would expect. Arduino, and it'll give you all the Arduino searches. You can also search by like an urgency, for example. It'll give you all the ones that are, you know, of a specific urgency here. Um, so yeah, that's the urgency kind of thing. It tells you how urgent the uh, uh, your 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 request was, and you can sort them by the time uh, just by clicking this column. It'll give you an up down sort on it, uh, so we can see which one was submitted first. Um, and uh, we can also, you know, sort them by the urgency to make sure that we help the people who need it the most first. Uh, your mentors can kind of, you know, do whatever, whatever kind of sorting order they want. They can search for all the ones that are still waiting, waiting for help, and that'll show all of the, all of the waiting. Uh, mentorship requests and uh, yeah, that's that but but really quickly we're gonna we're gonna view this mentorship request And as you can see this is the request got an Arduino board cannot connect to bamboo shoot It's drastically urgent and here's the screenshot uh, Of the random web application that I had from before that we uploaded so um, You're a mentor you, you kind of decide you're gonna help this person with the bamboo shoot request and you can message the person who made the request on slack uh, and then you can mark it as resolved, or you can just deny their mentorship request outright. Uh, you know, this button exists if somebody spams it, asks for something stupid. If they like, you know, are are, are being silly, you can always deny the mentorship request and say like, hey, this is silly. Uh, but you know, in this case, we're gonna we're gonna mark this request as resolved. And as you can see, we go back to the dashboard, and now this one has, the status has been updated from you know waiting to resolved. And if we search for waiting now, we don't get that that request doesn't show up anymore. And that's really great. You know, we've helped that person out, and we're able to continue filtering and sorting through the requests and making sure that as a mentor, you're able to always know who needs help. That's kind of the whole point of this page. It's to give you the power via the search and the sort and all of that other, all those other tools to make sure that uh, your your mentors are helping the people who need the most help as quickly as possible. Um, so yeah, if we go if we go back here to the participant page, you'll you'll notice that my mentorship request is gone now. That's the one I got help with. It's it's all done. And you know what? I'm gonna say that I don't know C plus plus is really a bogus request. I, I kind of figured that out. I actually do know C plus plus. I'm gonna resolve that request and and uh, you know then we're gonna just refresh this page and and these two have both been resolved. It's all taken care of. There's no mentorship requests that still need to be need to be handled. 
Um, and so, yeah. So this is, you know, this is the participant view. Again, here's your mentor view, and here's your admin view. And again, you know, this is dashboard. It's got basically all of the features you could possibly want, like anything you can think of. Mentorship, a schedule, a prize list, check-in, applications, hardware. We, we've got it covered here, and we hope that you're going to continue to use Dashboard and you know hopefully even contribute to Dashboard to make it better for everyone who is already using it. So thanks for sticking along on this really long screencast. Uh, we appreciate you checking out Dashboard, and we hope that it's going to help make your events better.